Mass Spring System. In this exercise, we'll try to modelize, I mean, to find the state equation of a system with uh, two carriages for which we know the masses and uh, uh, that are linked by uh, two springs for which we know the stiffness. So, so the two uh, carriages, uh, there is some friction with uh, the ground and the coefficient is uh, uh, alpha. So the degrees of freedom are Q1 and Q2, which correspond to the distance between each uh, carriage and the equilibrium point. So we have to find the state equation of the system and then to, to, uh, to check if it is uh, linear or not. So here is my system and the first uh, the first picture corresponds to Q1 equals zero and Q2 equals zero. So the system it uh, is at equilibrium. Here we can understand that due to the spring, the force of the spring one will uh, will make a force in the negative direction. So this one is a positive direction plus. And uh, Q2 since Q1 is greater than uh, Q, so Q2 is greater than Q1, we understand that the spring number 2 exerts a force which is in this direction. But U is an external force. To find the state equation of this system, we have to apply the fundamental principle of dynamic or the second law of Newton. For this, we'll apply first to the carriage number one and then to the carriage number two. So for the carriage number two, one will have uh, the sum of the forces that are applied on this carriage should be equal to the uh, uh, to the acceleration multiplied by the mass. So the first force here is negative and will corresponds to minus k1 q1. So here the first force is this one and recall that the sum of forces should be equal to m1 q1 where m1 is the mass of the first carriage. Now I will have the friction which is related to the uh, proportional to the derivative of q1 so this one and here the force uh, due to the second uh, spring will be positive here and k2 multiplied by q1 minus q2. Okay, now for the second one we'll have also two forces. Uh, so the first force will be due, due to the spring number two and in this case it is negative and also to u which corresponds to the control. So normally we can choose the control as we want. So for the second one, I will have u minus alpha q dot uh, uh, q dot two minus k two multiplied by q two minus q one. This should be equal to m two multiplied by q u dot dot two. Excuse me, here it's dot dot. Of course, acceleration. Now, uh, the state variable x should be equal to the degrees of freedom q1 and q2, but also to their derivative, q.1 and q.2. And to have the state equation, I should have an equation such as this, x dot equal f of x and u. So it means that I should have uh, uh, something like uh, uh, q dot one uh, uh, q dot two q dot dot one q dot 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 two and I should put 
a function here where I am only allowed to have x, so q1, q2, q.1, q.2, and u. That's what I should do. So in this case, we can understand that these two equations can be used if I isolate q.1 and q.2. But now, I will have also to express not only this one, but also this one. But we can understand they are directly related to those one here. It means that I can add q.1 equal q.1 and q.2 equal q.2. So it means that this corresponds to that, Whoop, where I should put the m1, m2 here, and this corresponds to that. We can understand also that there is some linearities. It means that here, which correspond to x dot, is linear with respect to q1, q.1, q2, and q.2. This means that I can put everything in a matrix form. So in a matrix form, so I will call uh, I will call this one by x1, x2, x3, x4, and if I do this, I will have to replace this one by x1, this one by x2, this one by x3, uh, and this one by x4. So in this situation, and, and this one also, of course, I have to replace. If I do this, I can understand that I have x.1, x.2, x.3, x.4, which correspond to these elements, are equal to a matrix multiplied by x1, x2, x3, x4, plus another matrix time u. We can understand that the u occur only here, and it is for q dot dot 2, which correspond to uh, x4 dot. This is why here I will have 0, 0, 0, and 1 divided by m2 due to this. So I will continue with this line. Due to this, I will have here minus alpha divided by m2 multiplied by x4, which is here. So I have four lines like this. I will have also here 0 minus k2 divided by m2 due to this, and here k2 divided by m2. Okay, now for the all the line, this one, everybody has to be divided by m1. Here I will have minus k1 plus k2 divided, minus here, divided by m1. k2 divided by m1 minus alpha divided by m1 and 0. Okay. Now I consider these two lines. So I will have here for the first one 0, 0, 1, 0 and 0, 0, 0 and 1. And for the output, I come back to 
the exercise. So it is uh, it is written that the output is Q1. So y will should be equal to Q1. So I come back here and I have to write that y is equal to something time x1, x2, x3, x4 plus something time u. So here I will have 0 and here this it will correspond to Q1. This is one. Uh, I have a one here. I, I have to check the dimension of the matrices. Here I have four columns which corresponds to the dimension of X and here also I should have four columns which correspond to the dimension of the derivative. Here I have only one input u which corresponds to a force. This is one here. I have only one column, but I should have four lines. Again here, since I have only one output, I should have four columns, uh, but uh, only one line because y is of dimension one. And u does not appear, but this matrix should have one line and one column. So this matrix corresponds to A, this matrix corresponds to B, this one to C, this one, uh, this one to D. So since I was able to put my system into the form x dot equal ax plus pu, y equal cx plus du, my system with an input u and the output y is linear.